I mean, I spent like? years and years and years doing exactly what you're talking about, mm -hmm. fasting, praying, yeah. being prayed over, delivered, all of the things that I was told I needed to do to take away my desire, that I would submit to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the time that I felt most filled with the Holy Spirit was when I kissed a woman. Um, that is when I was filled with peace and joy. You know, just like I want to respect your stories, there can't be a disproving of the Spirit of God in my life. That is a personal experience, just like you are having personal experiences. My personal experience and my community and my family all bear witness to the beautiful fruit of the Spirit of God being in my relationship with my wife and in our children. Can you link that fruit back to the Bible? Yeah. Because if you can't link it back to the Bible, First it's not the fruit First of the Holy Spirit. Just like God's redemptive order, you know, like if all the women in the world decided to have sex with women and all the men decided to have sex with men, there would no longer be any re uh, reproduction. God there has created us diversely. There are plenty of straight people who cannot reproduce. Of course. I'm just saying that there's an order to the way that God does things. And but so if God produced me, then like why couldn't God produce like just a normal gay person or just a normal transsexual person, like anything like that? Like I just don't think that you can really pray. I can't. I couldn't pray that away. That's right. And why do we need to suffer as people for a book that was written 3,000 years ago? Well, I'm long sorry. suffering I just, is like, a fruit of the Spirit. I, so. I, we have like 80 to 85 years on this planet. I don't want to suffer for any f***ing reason that I don't have to. And I've had to suffer for the first 24 years of my life. The what more did, you suffer, does it make you more of a Christian? <laughs> it just, it, yeah. Yeah. And what did Christians do before the Bible? Right? There were thousands of years before there was a text. And even when the text came, most people couldn't read and they didn't have access to the Bible. So what did they do? I think it comes down to like how you said your experience with the Holy Spirit, being filled up with the Holy Spirit while kissing a female. What is the fruit that comes from out of that? We have children, we have a beautiful home, we have a, an amazing community, our families love us and support us. We are happy and healthy. I mean, our life is so, so blessed. But my thing about that would be, I would say that God cares more about your holiness than your happiness. But, but You're defining thing, heterosexual, yeah. your uh, hol wholeness or holiness as heterosexuality. Well, no, no, Gay absolutely people can have not. That too. No, no, no. Oh, I'm definitely not defining that as heterosexuality. But in, in the way that you're speaking, you're like, well, it's not about being gay. Jesus wants me to be holy. Why are you putting those two things against each other? Well, gay people can live holy lives. Exactly. Well, Shalom. Giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem. Raka Kodash for giving us the understanding of the Bible through their men. That's the apostles and the bishops of Great Millstone who are worthy of double honors. And Yahweh Bashme Abu Shai Bahashem Raka Kodash Brakafam to the 144,000 servants as well as the remaining elect of Israel. So I just want to bring this article to your attention and highlight the wickedness of America and the practices of America and what they promote. As you can see, this is an article from The Hill dealing with this community. It says, number of LGBTQ elected officials. So this is dealing with um, America's constituency, their government. Number of LGBTQ elected officials up 200 percent since 2017 now the reason why this is significant is because when we go to the apocrypha which i'm not going to go there now but um when you go to the book of sirach also known as ecclesiasticus chapter 10 and verse 2 it speaks about how as the judge of the people is himself so are his officers and what manner of man the ruler of the city is such are all they that dwell therein okay and this is why there's so much confusion and so much um wickedness taking place in america okay because um the people that's actually in rulership the people that's being elected to govern America, okay, because these people are being elected, therefore, you know, they're given the um, citizens of America different freedoms, you know, liberty to to pretty much do whatever they want, especially as it pertains to their um, sexuality, if you if you will. Okay, I believe it also says in. Um, 
I believe that's Second Ezra's chapter 2 and verse 8. It speaks about how, um, how does it go? Woe be unto thee, Ashur, which we know Ashur is related to, um, you know, ancient Assyria, which America is pretty much um, spiritual Assyria, spiritual Nineveh, pursuant to Nahum, the third chapter. It says, Thou that hidest the unrighteous in thee, remember what I did unto Sodom and Gomorrah. And obviously, people have forgotten about what our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, did unto ancient Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, the reason I'm bringing this out is just to show you um, the level of wickedness that's happening out here in America, what they promote. And the reason why our Lord is going to um, destroy this place very soon within our lifetime. Okay, and when we say very soon, you know, we're talking about a matter of months. It could be another 12 months. It could be another 24 months. But we're very close to the destruction of this place that you know as America, which in the Bible, America um, is identified as Mystery Babylon the Great. When you go to the book of Revelation chapter 17, the reason why it's known as Babylon and uh, Babylon the Great is because of the mass confusion that takes place out here in America. All right confusion such as what we're seeing here you know concerning this community this is great confusion which the word um babylon goes back to the hebrew word babao which means confusion okay and this is a prime example of that it's also known as um, um spiritual sodom when you go to Revelation 11 and verse 8. Okay. That great city which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Where also our Lord was crucified. Okay. Now. Um, let me see. Where shall I start? Well, let's just read a little bit from this report. Let's just start here in this paragraph. It says the report first reported via NBC News found that the amount of LGBTQ elected officials has risen 190.8 percent since 2017. It also found that there was a 10 percent or 10.8 percent rise in LGBTQ elected officials between June of last year and May. So, you know, this um, lifestyle, which is a very sinful lifestyle, according to our law, which you can find um, our law on uh, this community when you go to the book of Leviticus 20 and verse 13, you've also got Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5 that goes into this lifestyle. You know, this lifestyle is punishable by death. Okay, this is just one example as to why our Lord is going to bring the second death, as is written in um, Revelation 21 and verse 8. Okay, and that second death, you know, is going to come by way of thermonuclear fire. That's going to be the new flood. All right, the great flood of old came by water. Well, this flood is going to come by way of fire, mainly to America, right? Not the whole entire world, as you would have certain other camps out there tell you, such as IUIC, which they're going off on what they're saying about how um, the whole earth is going to be destroyed via fire. That's not true, okay? But anyway. Our Lord is going to bring misery and destruction to this place that you know is America and especially to
into um, this community in which you have a lot of our own people, you know, Hebrew Israelites, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that are part of this community, okay? And they're gonna be destroyed too. As a matter of fact, since I said that, let me get a scripture in Amos chapter nine. And where should we start? Let's start at verse eight. The point I want is really in verse 10. So we're gonna jump down. Anyway, it says, behold, the eyes of the Lord, Yahweh, are upon the sinful kingdom. Now this sinful kingdom, you know, when you read it in its proper context, was really referring to um, our people, our, our nation back in the day, all right? But now when you bring it up to date, it's referring to uh, the man in power, which is Esau, Edom, also known as the man of sin, pursuant to Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse three. They're also known as the wicked, according to Malachi one and verse four. Job 9 verse 24, Isaiah 26 and verse 10. You know, we're living in a very sinful kingdom being ruled by the man of sin, the nation of sin. And what sin? Sin, according to 1 John 3 and verse 4, is the transgression of the law. What law? The laws of the heavenly father, Yahweh, and his son, Yahweh Shai. Okay, that were given unto us, the Hebrew Israelites, in the days of old anyway it says behold the eyes of the lord which the eyes are referring to the holy angels on one hand and it's also referring to the prophets okay because we're seeing the wickedness you know throughout the earth and um we're reporting the wickedness that's taking place that's happening in the earth such as what i'm doing right now so we're also the eyes of Yahweh Bashma was shy. It says, uh, upon the sinful kingdom, again, referring to America, primarily America. I mean, in a wider sense, it's referring to Esau's kingdom as a whole, but the focus is on America. And that's why it goes on to say, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. And the main land that our Lord is going to destroy from off the face of the earth is America. Mystery Babylon the Great. And our Lord is going to use the nuclear missiles, the intercontinental ballistic missiles that are going to be used during World War III when it heats up to a nuclear level coming by way of Russia, North Korea, China, Iran, and various other countries he's going to use their nuclear technology the nuclear missiles to destroy this place that you know is america off the face of the earth all right alongside the visitation of our lord and savior yahweh shai with the holy angels because they're going to come with their own form of fire too in the form of laser beams which is concentrated fire that's going to be shot out of their um, their spiritual vehicles, the chariots, the so-called UFOs. As a matter of fact, since I said that, let's get Isaiah 66 and verse 15, and we'll come back to Amos. This is Isaiah 66 and 15. It says, For behold, the Lord, whose name in the ancient Hebrew is Yahweh, and the heavenly father Yahweh, will come via Yahweh Shai, Okay, our Lord and Savior, His only begotten Son. The Lord will come with fire. The fire is going to come by way of the nuclear missiles. All right, as well as the laser beams. And with His chariots, like a whirlwind. What's the nature of a whirlwind? Destruction. All right, tornadoes, whirlwinds. That's symbolic of destruction and that's what our lord is coming with to america it says with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire okay you see right now our lord is rebuking the people 
um, beginning with our own people, the Hebrew Israelites, um, by way of his mouth, the mouth of the prophets, okay, he's also rebuking the other nations, starting with Esau, Edom, by way of the prophets, that's why it says this here, when we go to um, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2 and verse, let me see, verse 8, it says, and then shall that wicked be revealed, the wicked in this sense is referring to the man of sin, okay, the people of sin, which is Esau, Edom, the Edomites, which are these so-called white people, they're being revealed, they're being exposed by Yahweh Bashmael Shai via the prophets, i.e. the men of Great Millstone and like-minded righteous Hebrew Israelite men. It says, whom the Lord shall consume with what? with the spirit of his mouth. Again, referring to the prophets. You see, what a mouthpiece of our Lord, pursuant to Hosea 12 and verse 10. You've also got Luke chapter one, and I believe that's verse 70. All right, so we're speaking on the behalf of Yahweh Barshma al -Shai. And we're not speaking our own words, we're speaking the words of our Lord. That's why everything that we say, we back it up via the scriptures. It says, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So our Lord is first rebuking via his mouth, okay, which is the mouth of the prophets, and then by the brightness of his coming, which is referring to the coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, with the holy angels, okay. And as we just read here in Isaiah 66 and verse 15, that rebuke is going to come in the form of flames of fire, okay, via the nuclear missiles and the laser beams. It says in verse 16, Isaiah 66 and verse 16, for by fire and by his sword, the sword is a metaphor for the nuclear missiles, will the Lord plead with all flesh. Okay, and when you go into this word, plead in the Hebrew, you're going to find the Hebrew word shapa, which means judgment or punishment. Okay, as you see down here, it says to judge, govern, vindicate, punish. So our Lord is going to punish all the wicked, which includes two thirds of our own people, according to Zechariah 13 and verse 8. He's going to punish the inhabitants of the earth by fire and by his sword okay the nuclear missiles it says and the slain of the lord yahweh bashim al shai shall be many all right so there's going to be um a lot of death and destruction you know on the day of our lord but anyway going back to amos Chapter 9 and verse 8, it says, The eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. And that's a part of the good news, the gospel, that our Lord has a remnant, also known as the elect in the Bible, right? that our Lord is going to um, have mercy on and deliver from this coming destruction. All right, and we read about that too in um, Jeremiah 16 and verse 14. You can also go to Matthew 24 and verse 31. Okay, it speaks about our Lord um, delivering and gathering his elect from the four corners of the earth. But the main deliverance is going to take place out here in America, also known as the land of the north pursuant to Jeremiah 16 and verse 14. Okay, you've also got the one third in Zechariah 13 and verse eight. So, you know, this brings us hope that Lord willing, if we, you know, do our Lord's will, that he will um, have mercy upon us. And I'm speaking on the behalf of the hopeful elect of Israel, all right? 
those of us that are striving to be of the elect and that are doing our Lord's will to the best of our ability. Now let's jump down to verse 10. It says, all the sinners of my people, who are the Lord's people, the Hebrew Israelites, all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. And that's going into um, the mind frame and the mindset of a lot of our people. You know, they have this very proud attitude towards our Lord, you know, what the Bible says about their lifestyle, especially as it pertains to this practice, this lifestyle. You know, a lot of our people don't believe that um, they're going to be judged for being a part of this community, partaking in this community and whatnot. Okay. So again, Amos 9 and verse 10 says, all the sinners of my people. And an example of great sin is um, partaking in that lifestyle. Like I said, it's punishable or worthy of death pursuant to Leviticus 20 and verse 13. You can read that for yourself. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword Again, the sword being a metaphor for the nuclear missile or nuclear missiles, plural, which say the evil shall not prevent, shall not overtake nor prevent us. So our Lord is going to wipe out two thirds of our people um, over here in America that partake in this vile and abominable um, community. Okay, in which, you know, this lifestyle um, goes back to ancient Sodom and Gomorrah. And, you know, we're familiar with what our Lord done to ancient Sodom and Gomorrah. As a matter of fact, when we go to um, 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 6. Yep. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 6 it says well let me start up a little bit let's start from verse 5 it says well really I should start a bit more further up but for the sake of time I'll just start from verse 5 it says and spared not the old world but saved Noah the eighth person a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood of upon the world of the ungodly that's what our lord done during the first death you see now we're approaching the second death as is as is known or as is written in revelation 21 and verse 8 let me get that real quick revelation 21 and verse 8 says but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers your abominable includes people that's a part of this community our lord sees this lifestyle as an abomination again written in leviticus 20 and verse 13 and murderers and whoremongers that's your pimps and sorcerers that's people that partake in witchcraft and idolaters, those of you that worship false gods outside of the one true God, which is the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, and all liars shall have their part where? In the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Okay. And um, that's the spirit because our Lord destroyed ancient Sodom and um, the neighboring cities with fire and brimstone, okay, from the heavens. And that's what our Lord is going to do all over again to America, okay. But he's going to use these nuclear missiles to do that. It says, which is the second death. 
the first death was what the first death was when our Lord brought um, the flood as we're reading here the flood upon the world of the ungodly and our Lord is going to do something similar in our lifetime but the flood is going to come in the form of fire nuclear missiles primarily hitting America Babylon the Great and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemn them with an overthrow making them an end sample what's an end sample an end sample is an example okay the greek word is hyper or hypo digma hypo digma and it says an exhibit for imitation or warning an example so Sodom and Gomorrah the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah it says making them an end sample an example unto those that after should live ungodly so what our Lord done unto Sodom and Gomorrah was supposed to be an example unto future kings and future rulers on how not to live on how not to conduct yourself you know but that's the wickedness of Esau going against the scriptures going against the laws verse 7 it says and delivered just lot as in righteous lot which is our forefather okay the nephew of um, our forefather Abraham and you can go to Genesis 19 and read about, you know, um, Sodom and Gomorrah. Anyway, it says, and delivered just Lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, which is really the conduct of the wicked. And what were they conducting in? Homosexuality, lesbianism, things of that nature, which is a great sin. It says, for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous spirit from day to day with their unlawful deeds. You see? And um, those of us that's within this truth, starting with the men of the Lord, you know, we're in the same spirit as our forefather Lot, vexed. With the filthy conversation or the filthy conduct of the wicked. Alright. And we're just patiently waiting for our Lord to bring this destruction. Upon modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. Which is America. Anyway. Um, you know I just want to say a few words concerning this article. This report. And um. I pray and hope that you brothers and sisters that's of the elect were edified and um, Lord willing I catch you again in another video. Shalom.